Assalamu alaikum. In today's session, we are going to discuss two very important theoretical contributions that explain the process of migration from the rural areas towards the urban areas. And in these models, we will discuss the economic factors and economic conditions that help in deciding or they can be considered as the major determinants that explain why people who are living in the rural area, working in the rural areas, eventually decide to move from that place to some urban areas. So we will be discussing all those factors and the major economic determinants that explain this process of transition or migration from the urban to the rural areas. So if we get into the history, we see that in the, as long as the development of the Western Europe and USA is concerned, we see that we observe the same phenomenon that people have moved from the rural area towards the urban areas in the pursuit of high employment opportunities. And if you explain the process of economic development in these two major regions, that is the Western Europe and USA, we see that over time we observe that there has been a reallocation of the labor force. The labor force got reallocated like major components were initially located in the ma major proportion of the total population uh, was primarily initially located in the rural areas and then the reallocation took place which can be explained as a movement or a transition or the migration from the rural areas towards the urban areas. So we see that this particular process which eventually resulted in a significant economic development of these regions is very much in line or they provide us with the blueprints that we discussed earlier under the head of Lewis surplus labor model in which we discussed that the process of economic growth can be explained as the process that through which the people who are initially located and working with the traditional sector gradually move from the traditional sector towards the modern sector. And this is how we see that the surplus labor that is already present, uh, whose, the, whose marginal product of labor is almost equivalent to zero, they gradually move from the rural and the underdeveloped area, which, which was uh, in, in Lewis theory declared or defined as the traditional sector. They, people moved from where their marginal product of labor was zero. They, uh, a larger chunk of labor force, which is declared as a surplus labor, moved from the rural area towards the urban areas, and they got part and participated in the modern sector. So this resulted in a transition from the traditional sector towards the modern sector and there the marginal product was larger than zero and the wage rate which was being offered in the modern sector was fairly larger than the traditional sector. Therefore, uh, we see that um, all the surplus labor that is initially located and situated in the traditional sector gradually move towards the modern sector. They get the employment there and they are able to generate a high level of profit, as uh, a high level of wages as well. So this, in, in this process, according to the Lewis surplus labor theory, uh, will continue until uh, all the modern sector gets highly developed and this is how according to this model we we can explain the process of economic growth taking place in an economy so if we look at the overall process of development and the economic growth in USA and in Western Europe, we, we observed a similar kind of a movement from the ru rural areas towards the urban areas and the reallocation of the labor force, which eventually resulted in a high level of development, high level of per capita income. And overall, we see that a rapid pace of economic growth was also achieved because of this reallocation of the labor force. So we, again, this is something which is important that we need to see that if you look at the economic dynamics of the development process of these two regions I just mentioned, USA and Western Europe, we see that it was not uh, because of the internal migration, that is the migration which is taking place on internally that uh, the people are moving from one place to another within a country. We also observed that there was a significant international migration also that contributed to speeding up the economic growth process in these two regions, Western Europe and America. 
So uh, another important phenomenon which we observe is that as long as urbanization is concerned, we always see that urbanization and industrialization, these two things are interrelated with one another so much so that we can consider both urbanization and industrialization as synonyms. So overall we see that the Lewis model gets confirmed when we look at the, the economic growth processes of these two countries. Now if we look at the developing countries that are developing right now, we observe that although there is urbanization and there are a number of people who are migrating from the rural areas towards the modern sector or the uh, urban areas, but at the same time we see that there is a huge unemployment also in the urban, in the urban areas and this is something which, which, which confronts or which uh, is not in agreement with what we discussed under the Lewis surplus labor model where uh, we assumed and it was explained that there is um, enough uh, room available in the modern sector so whosoever will be shifting or moving from the traditional sector towards the modern sector that will be nicely absorbed in the modern sector but in fact if we look at the developing countries now we observe that there is a huge unemployment and at the same time we also see that there are a large number of people who are moving from the rural areas towards the urban areas. So in order to explain the determinants and the economic reasons, we see that uh, there, are, there, there are two important models that have been presented so far that explain the economic factors behind the migration or movement from the rural areas towards the urban areas. And these two models are the one which has been explained by Todaro and the other which is an expansion or an improvement and that particular model is called the harrison Todaro model. So we are going to discuss these two models in detail. Uh, as long as the Todaro migration model is concerned, it explains the rural urban migration as an economically rational process despite high urban unemployment. And we also see that according to this model, it is stated that the migrants calculate the present value of the urban expected income or its equivalent and then move only if this present value of the expected income which they will get once if they move uh, towards the urban areas and become a part of the modern sector uh, the formal modern sector they take into account the net present value of all the expected incomes which they will be getting and they compare that with the incomes which they are going to get the expected incomes which they are going to get while staying back in the rural area in doing whatever they are doing earlier. So if the expected income which they will get or we can say that if the net present value of the expected income if which they can get when they, when they move from the rural area towards the urban area exceeds the expected income which they are expecting to get while staying back in the rural area if the former exceeds the latter then they decide to migrate from the rural area towards the urban area so before this model we see that as long as the process of migration is concerned people were also always considering migration because of some social aspects for example it was stated that the idea behind or the reason behind migration from the rural area towards the urban area can be stated as because of the bread and the circuses that people are people get fascinated because of the lifestyle of the people who are origin previously living in the urban areas and they are also fascinated by the lights and the buildings and things like that so that is majorly the reason that puddles the people from the who are already living or situated in the rural area towards the urban area but from this model which we, which i am going to discuss with you in detail we see that it is not the social factors that are explaining the reason behind migration of people from the rural area towards the urban area we see that that there are there is there are certain economic factors involved and one major factor that causes people from moving uh, that causes people to move from the rural area towards the urban area is primarily because they compare the expected income which they can get while working in the urban area and
with the with expected income which they can get while working in the rural area so if the if one thing if while if they see that they can earn more if they move from the rural area towards the urban area they decide to move or they decide to migrate from one place to another so the next thing which i'm going to discuss with you in detail is the second model in which is called the harris to darrow model and this is an equilibrium version of the to darrow migration model which i've just uh, briefly explained in front of you uh, this is the model that predicts that expected income will be equated across rural and urban sectors and when taking into account the informal sector activities and outright unemployment so we will be explaining in terms of the equilibrium model in which the informal sector will also be accounted for so uh, getting into the details of the to darrow migration model the verbal description goes like this that if we take the migration it is basically a rational decision in which people take into account the net present values and they give themselves reasons uh, in order to support their decision whether Uh, to migrate to a certain place or not to migrate to a certain place the other important thing which is explained in this model is that the decision depends upon the expected rather than the actual wage differential so whatever income which they can get right now they are not going to base their decision on that actual income or the realized income they take into account the expected income that mean that is that the amount of money which they will be getting in future and they uh, like they take it as a stream or a flow of incomes and therefore they account for the net present value so uh, another important thing that has been explained in this model is that the probability of obtaining a city job is inversely related to the urban unemployment rate so if the urban unemployment rate is higher then the, definitely there would be lower chances for the people who are migrating from the rural area towards the urban area in order to get a job so the two variables are inversely related if the unemployment rate is low then there are greater chances for people who are coming from other areas towards the urban area that they would be able to get a nice job or they get employed in the urban sector or in the modern sector so another important thing which we are going to discuss in this model is that there are high rates of migration that are basically the outcomes of the rural urban imbalances so if people are not content with whatever situations they are living in in the rural area they decide to move for a better life towards the urban area so we see that this model encompasses all the major economic aspects that explain why the motives of migration or explains why people decide to move from one place to another and all the major economic factors are accounted for so the next thing which i am going to discuss with you are the major determinants so we are going to see that uh, in the in this model the details go that it's not only the non monetary factors so the monetary for factors are also accounted for so basically we can categorize if we explain the motives or the reasons why migration is carried out so i'm going to explain this uh, whole process as has been explained by the to darrow migration model in terms of a flow chart so this flow chart basically takes into account two different types of costs one is the monetary cost and the other is the non monetary cost so under the head of monetary costs and returns uh, to migration we will take into account the rural and the urban income the expenses which you have to incur on your education and then another important aspect which is accounted for in under the head of monetary costs that are involved when you decide to migrate from one place to another is the rural urban remittances that whatever amount of money people send from the urban area towards the rural area this is also an important thing so if uh, they can easily send the money they, then there would be a large number of people who would decide to migrate from one place to another so in addition to these monetary costs and return factors there are a number of psychic or non monetary factors also in other words we can take into account the uh, psychic or the mon non monetary costs and benefits that are taken into account by people when they decide whether to migrate 
from one place to another or not. So as long as these psychic or non-monetary factors are concerned, we, we see that the people take into account factors like risks and the urban lifestyle and the negative factors such as the overcrowding, pollution, etc. that they will have to face and experience if they decide to move towards the urban area. Another important aspect that is very frequently discussed when, whenever we discuss the migration theories is that they go for the positive things or the positive attributes uh, they go for when they decide to migrate are the bright lights they would be seeing and an improved lifestyle which they will be experiencing if they move from the rural area which is considered to be underprivileged or less developed as compared to the urban area. So they, they these are the different types of factors that are accounted for by people when they decide to migrate from one place to another. So this whole thing has been very nicely explained in terms of a schematic framework which I'm going to discuss in detail with you right now and we need to understand before we go on to the, to the discussion of this schematic framework that this whole framework is originally based upon the model by Todaro which is called the Todaro migration model. So this particular concept or the schematic framework has been designed by and structured by a very famous economist whose name is Derek Verley and the schematic diagram which you are seeing right now explains the factors, the major determinants that are accounted for in order to make a decision whether to migrate from the rural area towards the urban area. So the schematic framework which I am going to discuss with you and which you are seeing right now has been explained by Derek Byerly and this diagram has been taken as, as it was developed by the author from the paper Rural Urban Migration in Africa Theory, Policy and Research Implications. This paper got published in 1974 but still it is very relevant and it counts for and it covers all the important factors that can be used in order to explain why people decide to migrate from the rural area towards the urban area. So the first big box which you are seeing on the left top is the rural income. So it is important to see that the factors that are covered in this head or that are considered to be the determinants of the rural income. Uh, I mean to say that wo log jo ke rural area mein rehte hain, unki income kin important factors ke upar depend karti hai. So sabse pehle hamne dekha ke wo majorly depend karti hai teen bohat ahem cheezo pe. And these three factors include the complementary factors, yani ke unke paas zameen aur unka labor force kitna hai, plus uh, unki income while being in the rural area depend karti hai ke government ke policies kya hai, yani ke kya subsidies diye ja rahe hai, kis tarah ke taxes unse liye jate hai, taxes ki noyat aur unka ratio ya rates kya hai. Is pe bhi depend karti hai ke jo rural area mein log rehte hai, unki income kya hai, Plus another important thing which influences the rural income ko, that is the social system. So overall the social system hai prevail in the rural area ke andar wo kya hai. So these three important factors which decide or determine that the people who are in rural area mein reh rahe hai, unka income kya hoga. In addition to these three factors, uh, the rural income also depends on education qualification of the people ke whether they are skilled or not unke paas ko education qualification hai ya nahi plus unki income depend karti hai ek aur important variable pe aur wo hai ke urban rural remittances ka matlab ke unko uh, while being in the rural area urban area se kis kitne remittances mil rahe hain so ye paancho factors collectively explain karte hain ki agar ek individual ya koi family ya koi household rural area mein located hai ya based hai to unki income kya hogi uh, when we move towards the bottom of the same box aap dekh sakte hain yahan urban income को एक्सप्लेन किया गया है कि वो किन फैक्टर्स पे डिपेंड करता है अगेन अर्बन एरिया में रहने वाले लोगों की इनकम डिपेंड करती है पांच इंपॉर्टेंट डिटरमिनेंट्स या फैक्टर्स के ऊपर व्हिच इंक्लूड सबसे पहले वो इंक्लूड इन डिटरमिनेंट्स में एक शामिल है कि अर्बन का अर्बन एरिया की वेज रेट क्या है 
अगेन वी नीड टू सी दैट सारे के सारे अर्बन एरिया में एक ही तरह की इनकम वेज रेट नहीं प्रिवेल करी होती सो so, अगर गवर्नमेंट ने पॉलिसी लगाया है कि मिनिमम वेज रेट सपोज जैसे पाकिस्तान में आठ हजार रूपये पर महीना मिनिमम वेज रेट गवर्नमेंट ने डिफाइन किया हुआ है सो so, अगर अगेन सेक्टर टू सेक्टर ये वेरी करेगा सिटी टू सिटी वेरी करेगा हो सकता है कि कुछ ऐसे एरियाज हों जहां कम से कम या कुछ ऐसे सेक्टर्स हैं जहां कम से कम वेज रेट नौ हजार या दस हजार भी हो सकता है सो so, डिपेंड करती है कि जिस एरिया में वो इंटेंड कर रहे हैं रूरल एरिया में रहने वाले लोग मूव करने के लिए वहां की वेज का क्या लेवल है सो अर्बन इनकम में जो हम देखने जा रहे हैं कि हमें मूव करना चाहिए रूरल एरिया से अर्बन एरिया के लिए तो सबसे पहली चीज जो हमें देखनी है दैट इज अर्बन इनकम और अर्बन इनकम के डिटर्मिनेंट्स सो वन ऑफ द मेजर डिटर्मिनेंट्स ऑफ अर्बन इनकम इज द अर्बन वेज रेट दैट इज प्रिवेलिंग इन दैट पर्टिकुलर एरिया फिर हम देखेंगे कि वहां के सेल्फ एम्प्लॉयमेंट अर्निंग्स का के क्या हालात हैं जो कि अर्बन इनकम को इन्फ्लुएंस करने जा रहे हैं प्लस एक और बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट विच विल बी अकाउंटेड फॉर वेन यू डिसाइड के इनकम कितना है या इनकम को डिटर्मिनेंट के एक एक इंपॉर्टेंट डिटर्मिनेंट ऑफ अर्बन इनकम इज प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ गेटिंग अ जॉब कि वहां नौकरी मिलने के इम्कान कितने हैं सो so, इसके अलावा अर्बन इनकम डिपेंड करती है लेवल ऑफ क्वालिफिकेशन लेवल ऑफ स्किल्स के ऊपर ऑफ एन इंडिविजुअल और कोई भी जो आप एंटिटी को लेने जा रहे हैं इंसान को जो डिसाइड कर रहा है मूव करने के लिए कि मैं रूरल से अर्बन में जाऊं तो वो उसको अकाउंट फॉर करना करे करना पड़ेगा कि मेरे स्किल्स और मेरा एजुकेशन लेवल क्या है और इसके अलावा ही ऑल्सो अकाउंट फॉर द अर्बन रूरल रेमिटेंसेज सो टू गैदर वंस गैन देर आर फाइव इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर्स और डिटर्मिनेंट्स दैट इन्फ्लुएंस और दैट एक्सप्लेन वट इज गोइंग टू बी द ओवरऑल लेवल ऑफ अर्बन इनकम या अर्बन एरिया जहां वो मूव करने जा रहे हैं उसका इनकम क्या होगा सो टू गैदर दीज टू थिंग्स आर गोइंग टू इन्फ्लुएंस द डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ द रिटर्न टू माइग्रेशन का मतलब कि अगर इंडिविजुअल डिसाइड कर रहा है कि मुझे माइग्रेशन करना चाहिए या नहीं मुझे मूव करना चाहिए रूरल एरिया से अर्बन एरिया के लिए तो वहां जब उसने रिटर्न्स को काउंट फॉर करना है तो उसमें उसको ट्रेड ऑफ डिसाइड करनी पड़ेगी कि मेरा अभी रूरल इनकम क्या है और एक्सपेक्टेड अर्बन इनकम क्या होने जा रहा है सो वंस कैन आई वुड रिटरेट दैट अकॉर्डिंग टू द टूडारो माइग्रेशन मॉडल वी आर नॉट इंक्लूडिंग द एक्चुअल इनकम और द रियलाइज इनकम द इनकम विच विल बी यूज फॉर द डिटर्मिनेशन और फॉर द डिसीजन मेकिंग इज द एक्सपेक्टेड इनकम एंड दैट इज द स्ट्रीम ऑफ इनकम विच यू आर एक्सपेक्टिंग टू अर्न इफ यू मूव इवेंचुअली टू द अर्बन एरिया सो दिस इज हाउ द रिटर्न टू माइग्रेशन विल बी अकाउंटेड फॉर और जब हम रिटर्न टू माइग्रेशन की बात करते हैं विच इज एन अदर बॉक्स टूवर्ड्स द राइट साइड ऑफ द रूरल इनकम एंड द अर्बन इनकम बॉक्सेस हम देखते हैं कि रिटर्न टू माइग्रेशन रूरल इनकम पे डिपेंड कर रही हैं अर्बन इनकम पे डिपेंड कर रही हैं मगर इसके साथ ही में देर इज एन अदर फैक्टर जो कि इन्फ्लुएंस करती है रिटर्न टू माइग्रेशन को एंड दैट इज द साइकिक रिटर्न जैसे अभी मैंने आपसे डिस्कस किया आपके साथ कि साइकिक रिटर्न या साइकिक फैक्टर्स को भी अकाउंट फॉर किया जाता है साइकिक फैक्टर्स इंक्लूड द नॉन मॉनिटरी फैक्टर्स सच एज द रिस्क फैक्टर्स इन्वॉल्व और जैसे अभी मैंने आपको ब्राइट लाइट्स का बताया कि हो सकता है कि बहुत आपका जो जो काउंट फॉर करें आप फैक्टर्स उसमें एक अच्छा सोफिस्टिकेटेड हाई इंप्रूव लाइफ को भी आप कंसिडर करते हैं वेन यू आर गोइंग टू इवेल्युएट द रिटर्न टू माइग्रेशन सो रिटर्न को जब कैलकुलेट किया जाता है माइग्रेशन के रिटर्न को तो उसमें सिर्फ नेट प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ द एक्सपेक्टेड इनकम विच यू विल बी अर्निंग इफ यू इफ यू इवेंचुअली मूव टू द अर्बन एरिया को अकाउंट फॉर नहीं करें आप साथ ही में साइकिक या नॉन मॉनिटरी फैक्टर्स दैट इंक्लूड बेटर अमेनिटीज या इंप्रूव लाइफ स्टाइल या जो भी आपको सहूलियात मिल सकती हैं अर्बन एरिया में आप उनको भी कंसिडर करते हैं अपने डिसीजन मेकिंग प्रोसेस में सो वी सी दैट दिस रिटर्न टू माइग्रेशन विल इवेंचुअली टेक यू टू सम अदर थिंग्स एंड उसमें हम देखते हैं कि जब आप रिटर्न को अकाउंट फॉर करें तो उसमें एक और चीज अहम जो आप इंक्लूड करेंगे दैट वुड बी कॉस्ट ऑफ माइग्रेशन और कॉस्ट ऑफ माइग्रेशन इंक्लूड अ नंबर ऑफ फैक्टर्स सच एज द अपॉर्चुनिटी कॉस्ट द कॉस्ट ऑफ लिविंग द ट्रांसपोर्टेशन कॉस्ट एंड द साइकिक कॉस्ट सो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन बाय वन 
uh, each of these four factors which I have just enumerated in front of you. So, when we see that an individual has decided that I have to move to rural areas in urban areas, so when he will account for his returns, then first of all, he will account for how much income is earned in the rural areas. He will account for the net present value of all the expected incomes which he will be getting if he will move to urban areas. So, these two aspects to account for the returns to account for the returns. If I get this income, then what will I get overall my return or benefit if I migrate from rural area towards the urban area. So, in addition to this, when he will be considering these two aspects, उनका ट्रेड ऑफ या उनको देखने जा रहा है कि वो कौन सी ज्यादा अमाउंट है कौन सी छोटी अमाउंट है सो इसके अलावा जो एक और चीज वो अकाउंट फॉर कर रहा है दैट इज द कॉस्ट ऑफ माइग्रेशन सो नेचुरली एक तो उसको डिसाइड करना है उसको पैसे बियर करने हैं कि वो अर्बन एरिया मूव करेगा जब जाएगा तो उसको कुछ ट्रांसपोर्टेशन के लिए कॉस्ट को बियर करना है वन थिंग सेकेंडली उसको अपॉर्चुनिटी कॉस्ट बियर करनी पड़ी है यानी कि जो भी उसको बेनिफिट فوائد پیسے مل رہے تھے جو وہ گاؤں میں رہ رہا ہے رورل ایریا میں رہ رہا ہے وہ سارے کے سارے اس کو فارگو کرنے پڑ رہے ہیں and then he would because he is leaving all of these benefits and then moving on to the urban area so this is the opportunity cost he will have to take into account so opportunity cost account for کی کس کی وہ سارے benefits کی اور income کی جو کہ وہ حاصل کر رہا تھا while staying in the rural area at the same time transportation cost account for next اس نے bear کیا cost of living so جب وہ move کرے گا from the rural area to the urban area naturally اس کو کافی we know that when we move from the rural to the urban area the cost of living is a bit higher as compared to جو بھی آپ کو cost of living ہوتا ہے جو آپ rural area میں رہ رہے ہیں تو وہ کم ہے as compared to urban area کا cost of living so جب اس نے اپنے سارے کے سارے migration کے कॉस्ट को अकाउंट फॉर करने तो उसमें उसको कॉस्ट ऑफ लिविंग भी अकाउंट फॉर करनी पड़ेगी इन एडिशन टू दैट वो साइकिल कॉस्ट को भी अकाउंट फॉर कर रहा है कि अभी देर आर देर कुड बी अ नंबर ऑफ थिंग्स जो कि आप मॉनेटरी टर्म्स में मेयर नहीं कर सकते या क्वांटिफाई नहीं कर सकते सच एज देर आर सम सर्टन सॉर्ट ऑफ रिस्क दैट आर इन्वॉल्व वेन यू डिसाइड टू मूव फ्रॉम द रूरल टू द अर्बन एरिया नेचुरली हो सकता है कि रूरल एरिया में आप फैमिली के साथ रह रहे हैं आपका पूरा खानदान लुक ہے وہاں اور کچھ بھی گربڑ کے سیچویشن میں کچھ بھی پرابلم کے سیچویشن میں کچھ بھی ایکسیڈنٹ کے سیچویشن میں the family is there to help you out تو آپ جب موف کرے ہیں as an independent household towards the urban area تو there could be a number of risk factors that could be there that are there which you are going to account for and this also adds to the total cost of migration which you will have to bear when you decide to move from one place to another. So all these things are to gather help you in measuring the total returns which is جب ہم ریٹرن کو کاؤنٹ فور کرتے ہیں تو that is always cost minus benefit. So آپ نے cost کو کاؤنٹ فور کیا benefits کو کاؤنٹ فور کیا and this will take you to the overall another important step جس کو ہم بولتے ہیں perceived value of migration so جب ہم perceived value of migration کو determine کرنے جا رہے ہیں تو اس میں آپ cost اور expected income کو account for کرے ہیں but at the same time when you are going to take into account this perceived value there are a number of other factors also that are involved سب سے ایک important بات یہ ہے کہ آپ information flows کو account for کریں گے اپنا perceived value of migration کو determine کرنے کے لیے اور اس information flow کو decide کرنے کے لیے آپ جو تین اہم factors کو consider کرتے ہیں they include the distance your contacts that are in the rural and the urban areas and then at the same time the level of education which you have so یہ سارے کے سارے چیزیں آپ کو help کرتی ہیں in order to decide about a certain perceived value of migration آپ decide کر رہے ہیں کہ اگر میں migrate کرتا ہوں تو اس کا total value کیا ہے so that value is the perceived value is decided beforehand and then eventually you make up the decision so اگر یہ سارے non-monetary monetary costs non-monetary monetary benefits 
کو آپ نے کنسیڈر کیا اور اگر آپ کو یہ لگ رہا ہے کہ جو نیٹ پریزنٹ والیو آف دا ایکسپیکٹڈ کاس اینڈ بینیفٹس از لارجر اف یو موو ٹو دا اربن ایریا اینڈ دا نیٹ پریزنٹ ویلیو آف آل دا ایکسپیکٹڈ کاس اینڈ دا بینیفٹس وچ یو ول بی گیٹنگ وائل اسٹینگ بیک ان دا رورل ایریا اف اور اربن ایریا کی جو ایکسپیکٹڈ انکم ہے اس اس کے جو ویلیو ہے دیٹ ایکسیڈس دا ویلیو وچ یو آر ایکسپیکٹنگ ٹو ارن اور گیٹ وائل اسٹینگ بیک ان دا رورل ایریا آپ ڈیسائڈ کرتے ہو ٹو مائگریٹ بٹ اف دا ویلیو دا پرسیوڈ ویلیو آف مائگریشن بیکم اسمالر دین دا پرسیوڈ ویلیو آف اسٹینگ بیک ان دا رورل ایریا دین یو ڈیسائڈ ناٹ ٹو موو towards the urban area. So this is how, according to uh, this model, this schematic framework, the process of migration can be explained and um, you will be seeing that it, it has taken into account all the important um, factors that are used in order to decide or in order to determine how and what are the different things that are accounted for by an individual or a household when they decide to migrate from the urban urban area and to the uh, sorry when they decide to move from the rural area towards the urban area so wo sare ke sare ahem factors ko kaun kaun se factors hain aur kis tarah se wo decide karne mein hame madad dete hain ye bahut achhi tarah se wazahat se is schematic framework mein explain kiya gaya hai Uh, the next thing I am moving on to is um, an extension of this model, which I have done in the introduction of the introduction of the session. So, I have done it in the introduction of the Belay to Darrow migration model, and then I am going further to the Harris to Darrow model, which is considered to be an advancement or an extension of this model, which we have just discussed. So, as long as the Harris to Darrow model is concerned, we see that the Harris to Darrow model may دو امپورٹنٹ اسمپشنس لیے گئے ہیں سب سے پہلی اسمپشن یہ ہے کہ جو ایگریکلچر سیکٹر ہے وہ رورل سیکٹر ایگریکلچر سیکٹر کے اوپر بیس کرتی ہے اور ساتھی میں ایک کوئی بھی اکانومی کے اندر دیر آر ٹو ڈفرنٹ سیکٹرز ون از دا رورل سیکٹر اینڈ دا ادر از دا اربن سیکٹر سو وی ابزرو این ادر امپورٹنٹ اسمپشن ان دس ماڈل اینڈ دیٹ از دیٹ وین یو لک ایٹ دا انکم اور دا ویج وچ از بینگ جنریٹڈ بائی دا پیپل ہو آر located in the urban area that is fixed by the government and it is given as WM. So there are certain things which I am going to explain by using this diagram which I am going to draw for you. So I will explain what this model is and it explains why people migrate and if the migration takes place, what is behind it and what is behind it and if the process continues, then eventually how the equilibrium will be established in the overall economy. So as I have said now, کہ ہم اس ہائپوتھیٹیکلی ایک ماڈل کو میں لینے جا رہے ہیں کہ کوئی بھی اکانومی جس کو ہم اس ماڈل کے تھرو ایکسپلین کرنے جا رہے ہیں میں دو سیکٹرز ہیں دا اربن ایریا جہاں انڈسٹریل سیکٹر یا مینوفیکچرنگ سیکٹر میجر ہے اور ایک ہمارے پاس رورل ایریا ہے جہاں ایگریکلچرل سیکٹر یا ایگریکلچرل ایکٹیویٹیز زیادہ میجرلی ایگزیکیوٹ کی جاتی ہیں پلس میں نے آپ کو بولا کہ یہاں ہم اسیوم کرنے جا رہے ہیں کہ ڈبلیو ایم از دا minimum wage rate which is going to be there in the manufacturing sector or the urban sector. So I am going to draw this diagram in order to explain. So along the vertical axis, I am going to take the wage in the rural area and the urban area. So x axis ke upar hum lene ja rahe hain labor force ko. So abhi mene kaha, suppose this is OA and this is OM, right? These are the two levels. Origin, we can say that the agriculture sector is on this vertical axis. I am going to wage on the agriculture sector. I am going to wage on the vertical axis on the manufacturing sector or urban area. So over here, I am taking WA and there, I have taken WM. So suppose, we have a demand for labor curve. This and this is A, A prime. which is the demand for labor curve in the agriculture sector. So, you can understand that we have a manufacturing sector demand for labor curve and this is the wage in the manufacturing sector or the urban sector and this is the amount of labor which will be working which we can represent from OM. 
ओ एम ओ एम प्राइम सो इसको उठाया और हमने यहाँ रखा है हमारे कन्वीनियंस के लिए कि हम दोनों चीजों को एक ही ग्राफ में रिप्रेजेंट कर सके सो राइट ओवर हेयर इफ आई टेक द डिमांड फॉर लेबर कर्व इन द अर्बन सेक्टर और इन द मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर सो दिस इज दिस विल बी अ नेगेटिवली स्टोपिंग कर्व लाइक दिस एंड आई एम टेकिंग आई एम लेबलिंग दिस डिमांड फॉर लेबर कर्व इन द मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर विच अगैन मैंने पहले भी बोला अभी फिर बोलने जा रही हूँ दैट हम एस्यूम कर रहे हैं कि एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर रूरल एरिया को रिप्रेजेंट कर रही है और मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर अर्बन एरिया को रिप्रेजेंट कर रही है सो डिमांड फॉर लेबर कर्व in the agriculture sector is given as aa prime and demand for the uh, labor in the manufacturing sector or the urban sector is given by m m prime right so if for example the demand in the manufacturing sector and the agriculture sector is is such such that uh, we say that there are similar wage rates that are present in the two markets or in the two areas then the wages should be at wm steric and wa steric dono mein ideally same level of wage hai which is practically realistically hum dekhe to aisa nahi hai ki agar dono sectors mein hum dekh sakte hain ki aisa nahi ho sakta ki jo wages hai in the agriculture sector or the rural area becomes equivalent to the मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर्स वेज सो हमने कहा अगर ऐसा होता तो आपकी जो इकोनॉमी uh, के अंदर uh, लोग काम कर रहे हैं दैट वुड हैव बीन गिवन एज ओ ए स्टारिक लोग काम कर रहे होते डब्ल्यू ए स्टारिक वेज के ऊपर इन द एग्रीकल्चरल सेक्टर एंड ओ स्टारिक एम लेवल ऑफ ओ एम ओ एम स्टारिक लेवल ऑफ पीपल वुड हैव बीन वर्किंग इन द मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर और इन द अर्बन सेक्टर सो आइडियली दिस इज नॉट प्रैक्टिकल ये ऐसा हो नहीं सकता बिकॉज वी नो दैट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर या अर्बन सेक्टर के अंदर या अर्बन एरियाज के अंदर वेजेस आर सेट बाय द गवर्नमेंट और वहां एक मिनिमम वेज रेट डिक्लेयर की जाती है एज वी एस्यूम डैट हमारे पास इस इकोनॉमी के अंदर जिसकी हम ये इलास्ट्रेशन लगा रहे हैं कुछ वेज रेट मिनिमम वेज रेट हैज बीन डिसाइडेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट एंड दैट इज गिवन बाय डब्ल्यू एम बार सो मैंने कहा कि वो uh, कुछ हाई लेवल ऑफ इनकम है राइट right, या वेज है सो so उसको मैंने लेबल करा जैसे दिस इज द डब्ल्यू एम बार लेवल राइट एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस हाई वेज रेट दिस इज द डिमांड फॉर लेबर इन द मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर वी सी दैट this is the demand for labor curve so this corresponds to a certain level of people who would be working in the urban area aur maine isko label kara hai as o m r right so this is something which is different from this so ye level of employment in the two areas will be achieved only agar wage in the agriculture sector wage in the manufacturing sector ya rural or urban area ki wages dono barabar honge to itne log agriculture sector mein kaam karenge itne log urban sector mein kaam uh, sorry yes urban sector mein kaam karenge but since the wages in the manufacturing sector or in the urban areas is fixed at a higher level as we have assumed to be wm prime bar so iske corresponding aapke paas itne log kaam kar rahe hain in the urban area whereas ye sare ke sare log jo hain ye agriculture sector ke liye mein kaam kar sakte hain ya hamare paas puri labor force padi hui hai amount of labor which is Uh, going to be working which will be working with the agricultural sector if this is the wage rate that will be determined here so humne kaha if this is the case then if if i extend it further right and this could be the humne kaha this would be the level of wage at which maine isko bola w a not this would be the wage at in the agricultural sector corresponding to which this much amount of people or labor force will be absorbed by the agricultural sector so this this will be the situation agar we are think talking about as an economy where migration is not taking place so if migration is not taking place then uh, this much number of labor force total labor force will be working with the urban sector because of the high wage rate and the remaining number of people will be working with the agricultural sector and the agricultural wage will be this much 
So we see that overall, if this situation prevails, no migration takes place, then the difference in the wage in the urban area and the rural area would be given by the difference between WM prime and WA naught. So you can see that there is a huge difference between the wage rate in the two sectors and because of this huge difference in the wage rate, people will decide to move from the rural area towards the urban areas. So we see that this wage rate ke fark ki wada se because if I extend this over here you can see it easily that this is a, this is WA not level of wages so itna wage mil raha hai agriculture sector ke logon ko itna wage mil raha hai manufacturing ya urban sector ke logon ko and because this gap between the two wages is very high this will result in pushing the people to migrate from the rural area towards the urban area so if that thing happens then people will continue to migrate eventually or they will start migrating from the rural area towards the urban area because of this big difference in the wages. So now if we say that suppose because of this migration the there is shortage of labor in the rural areas and this results in the wages to go up so eventually WA not say wage in the agricultural sector increase karti hai aur wo chali jati hai W a par ke upar. So we see that corresponding to this level of wage, this much people will be working with the O A not will be the level of people or the labor force which will be working with the rural sector, agriculture sector, rural, rural areas, agriculture sector because the wages have gone up, right? And as long as this difference is concerned, we can see that over here you can see OA naught se leke OM bar tak ye jo pura ka pura area hai, ye wo log hai jo ke agriculture sector se migrate kare hai towards the urban area, right? And because Unke liye unko is sector be absorb hona possible nahi tha because is jo jin logon ke liye ye wage level offer kiya gaya hai this has been occupied or employed and the number of people who are getting this high wage rate is given as OM OM bar. So ye jo puri ke puri log hain jo yahaan se leke idhar tak constitute karte hain area ko these are the people who will be there migrated from the rural area towards the urban area right but these to gather the pure ka pura jo distance hai, they will be working with, let me tell you another thing, that this distance is the overall people who will be working in the urban sector, right? And this has been, this section has been absorbed in the formal sector, whereas ye puri ki puri jo difference hai between OM bar to OA not tak, these will be employed by the informal sector in the rural, in the urban area. So, ye sare ke sare log jo hai, wo urban area ke informal sector may absorb honge, right? And they would be, they can be the people jo ke unemployed hai, unemployed bhi ho sakte hai, ya, agar wo employment hasil karne mein kamiyab ho jate hai, to they will be employed in the informal sector of the economy. So this is how this overall migration process can be explained using this diagram. So eventually we see that the people who will be working uh, in the agriculture sector are, are given by this distance, right? And the people who will be working in the formal sector of the urban area are given by this region. And as long as the difference between this level and the, dif and this le the distance between these two points is the number of people who are either unemployed but they are they have moved from the agriculture sector or the rural areas towards the urban area but and some of them will be unemployed some of them will be working with the informal sector so again there is another important thing which i want to share with you and that is the this point so right over here this point has been explained by harris to, uh, in the harrison to Darrow model as the point where the Agricultural income becomes equivalent to the expected income in the manufacturing sector or the modern sector or we can say this that this is the so they say that if WM bar is the this wage rate that has been set as the minimum wage rate of the uh, in the formal sector of the urban area then you 
M, the amount of people who have become a part of this uh, urban area formal sector divided by this area OA up to this, this together this US thing so uh, I'm, let me put up a this whole thing is the total number of people who have migrated from the rural area towards this and I'm labeling it as OUS. So this is the urban sector um, labor force and this is the labor force which has been absorbed by the formal sector of the urban sector. So right over here we say that this point is the point where the agricultural agricultural sectors or the rural sectors wage has become equivalent to the expected income from the urban area so therefore people have decided to work in the in the rural area to to work here and if this exceeds the wage uh, this particular thing the expected income exceeds this then they will start moving from the rural area towards the urban area so if I extend this curve this would be the line which will tell uh, us about the different points at each these two things will become equivalent and again I'm going to explain what is meant by these this particular thing and with this equation we say that at all these points we say that the wage in the rural area is equivalent to the expected income so jaise jaise ye wage upar jayegi naturally ye cheez zyada badi hone se aapki jo expected income hai jab tak wo utni badi nahi hogi tab tak log rural area mein stay karna pasand karenge and they would not go to the to uh, they would not decide to migrate so this is the minimum level of uh, wages which they can get in the rural area agar is this side the right hand side of this equation becomes larger than this then they will get yani expected income uh, from the urban area agar ye cheez badi hai from wa only then they will decide to migrate from the agriculture sector towards the urban area otherwise if the two things are going to be the same then they will be indecisive they will prefer to stay with the rural area so this is the model which explains to Darrow Harris model which explains how the equilibrium is established in an economy when we look at um, a developing economy where we can explain the economy or split the economy into two different types of sectors or two different types of areas the rural area and the urban area there are a number of implications which we can derive from the model which we have just discussed and I'm going to discuss uh, or elaborate five uh, policy implications uh, so we can get uh, some ideas from this uh, from these two models which I have just explained in front of you uh, for the policy making or for the decision making process so the first thing we need to see that or we need to consider when we will be developing the policies in order to stop the unemployment high and in increasing unemployment levels because of this people migrating from the rural area towards the urban area so the first thing is that we need to emphasize that we have to reduce the urban bias so we discussed this concept earlier uh, saying that urban by urban bias we mean we say we take it as something which uh, in which we uh, overall observe that there is a greater inclination of the government or in the policies which are structured implemented executed by the government sector which focus upon the development of the urban areas at the cost of the rural areas so when the governments prioritize uh, the areas uh, in which they need to spend their money uh, as the public policy uh, they always uh, give a greater significance or greater importance to the urban areas development as compared to the rural area and we discussed that this could be because of certain political reasons uh, because um, they go for the development of the urban areas and that is highlighted a lot and that helps them in, in getting votes and becoming popular uh, within the country and across the globe across uh, the border as well so um, if they focus if the government actually wants to reduce this rural urban migration 
and uh, because uh, reduce significantly the unemployment that is caused because of this migration uh, from the rural towards the urban areas it has to uh, reduce the urban bias and uh, like uh, some consideration should be uh, made in order to um, develop the uh, rural areas also so that uh, the thing which we have just just discussed that uh, they need to when when people decide to migrate from one place to another they always compare uh, this uh, the ratio which i have just or the equation which i have just explained and that said that the wage which uh, person is getting in the agricultural sector should be equivalent to the uh, if is equivalent to the expected income which he is going to get uh, if he decides to move uh, towards the urban area if the two things become equivalent then he would be indifferent and uh, to make up a choice whether to go for the migration or not but if the agricultural income becomes larger than the expected income which he may get from by migrating from one place to another then he would decide to stay in the same place where he was so if because of this reduced urban bias we see that the rural area also gets developed gets developed and then uh, this uh, when when the when the equality or when the comparison is 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 to be made by the people who are deciding to go for uh, migration they will uh, they will find it difficult uh, to find out a big difference in the in the two uh, wages which they are getting right now and which they will be getting if they move towards the urban area so uh, another important thing which uh, if it needs to be looked at um, when uh, 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 when defining or designing the policies by the government is that uh, the imbalances in the expected income opportunities are considered to be very crucial and they are very important when they decide to move from one place to another so we see that uh, because of this high urban wage set in the um, urban area it kind of like induces migration so ye uh, migration ko induce ya trigger karti hai ya encourage karti hai uh, urban uh, uh, urban area ki हाई वेज रेट सो अगर रूरल एरिया में भी कुछ इस तरह के इंतजाम किए जाएं कि वहां की जो वेजेस हैं या जो टोटल अर्निंग्स होते हैं या नेट अर्निंग्स हैं इंडिविजुअल्स के हुआ रिजाइडिंग एंड बेस्ड इन द रूरल एरिया उनकी इनकम में अर्बन वेज से बहुत बड़ा फर्क नहीं हो अगर तो दे नेचुरली पीपल वुड प्रफर स्टेइंग बैक इन द रूरल एरियाज एंड Uh, this will help in curtailing this uh, problem of uh, increase or, or significant increase in the unemployment in the urban areas so another important aspect or the policy implication which we can derive from these two models is that indiscriminate educational expenses basically uh, strengthen this uh, concept of uh, migration and unemployment so agar hum jo jo bhi agar indiscriminate educational expenses government incur kar rahi hai एजुकेशन लेवल बढ़ाने के लिए रूरल एरिया के लोगों के लिए और अर्बन एरिया के लोगों के लिए सो इंस्टेड ऑफ लाइक जस्ट एडिंग टू द क्वालिफिकेशन बाय स्पेंडिंग मोर एंड मोर मनी ऑन इंप्रूविंग द एजुकेशन लेवल इफ दे बेसिकली इफ द गवर्नमेंट बेसिकली फोकस इज अपॉन प्रोवाइडिंग पीपल विद विद द स्किल्स दैट आर नीडेड टू सेट अप एंड टू एक्सपैंड द एग्जिस्टिंग इंडस्ट्रीज एंड द बिजनेस वेंचर्स दैट आर बेसिक basically located uh, in the rural areas so that is also help uh, that can help in reducing the unemployment in the urban areas plus uh, we also see that the subsidies that are given on the wages and the scarcity factor pricing that is uh, sometimes set up by the government in the urban area ki agar aap um, logon ko uh, ek high level of wage rate ko maintain karne ke liye private sector ko sometime government's wage subsidies dete hain uh, taki uh, to realize के अर्बन एरिया में रहने के लिए लोगों को जो कॉस्ट ऑफ लिविंग है वो ज्यादा ज्यादा बेयर करना पड़ता है और हाई प्रोडक्टिविटी वाले इंडिविजुअल्स को अपने साथ कंटिन्यू करने के लिए जो भी इंडस्ट्रियल सेक्टर है वो एक हाई सफिशिएंटली हाई लेवल ऑफ वेज ऑफर करे उसके लिए गवर्नमेंट जो है वो प्राइवेट सेक्टर को वेज सब्सिडी देती है सो वी सी दैट दीज दीज कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ वेज सब्सिडीज एंड स्केरसिटी फैक्टर प्राइसिंग दे काइंड ऑफ लाइक कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट और दे एड टू this uh, problem of migration from the rural uh, rural to urban areas and um, increase in the massive increase in the unemployment so agar ye wale factors ko government dhyan mein rakhe to naturally ye wale cheeze is tarah ke ex- ex- exercise nahi karenge factors ya policies jinki wajah se uh, 
आप अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट का को बढ़ता हुआ देख, देखते हैं एन अदर इम्पोर्टेंट पॉलिसी इम्प्लीकेशन विच वी डिराइव फ्रॉम दीज मॉडल्स इज दैट द प्रोग्राम ऑफ इंटीग्रेटेड रूरल डेवलपमेंट शुड बी इंकरेज एंड परहैप्स इफ यू कैन रिकॉल जब हमने डेवलपमेंट ऑफ चाइना को डिस्कस किया था तो उसमें हमने एक इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट को डिस्कस किया था दैट वॉज द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द टाउनशिप एंड द विलेज एंटरप्राइजेज सो अगर आप जो विलेज में रहने वाले लोग हैं रूरल एरिया में रहने वाले लोग हैं उनको आप स्किल ड्रिवन डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम्स इंट्रोड्यूस करें उनके लिए और उनको उनके लिए स्मॉल एंड मीडियम एंटरप्राइजेस को इस्टेब्लिश करें जो कि रूरल एरिया में ही बेस करती हैं तो नेचुरली दैट will also contribute significantly in reducing this migration uh, probability ya migration ka jo flow hai from the rural to the urban area plus that will also curtail uh, considerably this problem of unemployment which results because of this massive inflow of people from the rural to the urban area so together if all these different types of uh, steps are considered or uh, things are considered by the government sector when they decide sign uh, various types of policies in order to overcome the problem of unemployment uh, naturally this that will cause a significant drop in the unemployment and they that will also help us in in considerably improving the overall employment level and coming over this issue of migration from the rural and urban rural to the urban area as well thank you